Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer and this is a video about the full moon in Pisces taking place on October 30th at 9.35 p.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This will be the Lightworker Energy Update for this lunation. I'm super pumped that we're getting to do this at this time because I have a couple of very fun special announcements for you. I've got an invitation to a live conversation with me that will be taking place on this Sunday. For those of you who are available for it, you can definitely join me live. It'll be an Ascension Energy Update. And we'll be having a little bit of a chit chat about Ascension symptoms, where we're all at as a Lightworker Collective, and transitions you may be experiencing at this time. We're also going to talk about a little bit some of the special role of Twin Flames when it comes to Ascension energy on Earth at this time as well. This conversation will be live on Sunday, August 26th, right here on YouTube at 12 o'clock Eastern nine o'clock Pacific and 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean. You can check a time zone converter for your local time. And I'm really looking forward to having you there because at the tail end of that, I will in in make a formal invitation, but I'll give you a quick preview now. Uh, this year's Q&A with Kay is now available for registration. And this is the annual four-week coaching program with me this year, we're going to be focused on light work and making light work lighter. It is called Light Worker Mastery. It is a five week program that allows you to have private conversations with me where we do weekly uh, instruction, followed by a lengthy and juicy question and answer and coaching por portion. We're going to start on September 1st. Link is in the description box. I'd love for you to join if you're guided, and I'll give you more details about this on Saturday. But for those who register early, I mean Sunday, but for those of you who are registering early, I do have some special gifts available for you, which I'll tell you about when we meet on Sunday, but definitely register now if you want to take advantage of those. All right, let's get into the content for this lunation. It is an exciting lunation. The, the whole series kind of from in the second half of the year, the first half of the year was really exciting because we had a lot of time focused on cultivating, creating, clarifying precisely what we wanted. It was manifestation energy on steroids, tons of new energy hitting the earth as some major planetary transitions move from signs that they'd been in into new signs. And now we're in the second half of this year where we're getting the opportunity to fully clean up the past out with the old before we 100% step into our new as we walk into 2024. And this full moon in Pisces is an important point in this timeline. So our full moon is at the seventh degree of Pisces. Here it is. And there's the sun opposite her and conjunct the earth as she normally is when she we have a full moon. And this makes this particular full moon perfect for completely releasing cycles and sending the energy or thing that you're done with back to the source of life. And in our dimension, that would be the sun and being able to release it for a full rewrite to its next highest timeline, full rewrite to love, full rewrite back to source. And that's really this culminating energy is just so heightened every year at the full moon in Pisces, because we have here Pisces being the last sign of the Zodiac, right? And here we have specifically at this one, um, we've got a special communication with Saturn next to the full moon there. And Saturn is our restorer of integrity, restorer of wholeness. And Saturn gets a really bad rap, astrologically speaking, with a lot of astrologers. But I think of all of the planets that facilitate change, Pluto, Neptune, Saturn, Chiron, and Uranus, 
Saturn has got to be my absolute favorite. In fact, I think I like him even more than some of the other ones. Here's the deal with Saturn. When Saturn is on the move in your life and by transit or sitting in a prominent place in your chart uh, by transit, what Saturn wants to do is help you bring things back into alignment with who you really are and who you're meant to be. In the mythology, Saturn was the governor given responsibility to govern order, time, sequencing, the movement of the seasons. And later in the mythology, you know, Saturn's mother, Gaia, who had birthed him, requested help from him because she was being really badly abused by one of her lovers, her lover at the time. And, you know, she said, you know, help, I need some help. Can somebody please help me? Because, you know, I'm trying to do what I'm built to do. I'm trying to birth things. That's my job is to just create. And my lover is trying to push our co-created babies back inside me. And that's not going very well. And Saturn said, all right, so what do you need me to do, mom? And she said, I want you to go castrate him. Now, castration may have been a harsh punishment. I concur. If you thought it, I thought it too. You're not alone. However, when we look at the history of astrological mythology, that has lent itself to Saturn carrying the moniker of the harsh teacher or the deliverer of karma or the uh, one who brings about retribution, the punisher, the separator. That's really only when you look at it from the male gaze in that story, the Uranus gaze. But when you look at it from Gaia's perspective, the feminine perspective, you see that she got the relief of being able to be restored to wholeness and doing what she was built to do through the assistance of Saturn. And so Saturn has this, you know, reputation for quote unquote, ending things in people's lives. But it's really important to understand that anything Saturn brings to fruition, completion, or separation in your life when Saturn's on the move, Saturn's doing it because that thing, whether you knew it or not, was going to compromise you or was already undermining your ability to be exactly who and what you were created to be. And so it's important that we really understand, you know, when we start to look at the mythology, we really understand it from all the perspectives and holistically so that we can integrate the benefit and really see how the planets are truly on our side. The way this realm was created is truly meant to help and benefit us. So we've got Pisces, the last sign of the Zodiac representing completion, We've got a full moon representing completion, and we have Saturn in the mix also saying there might be something that needs to come to a close here that wasn't quite aligned to begin with, or had maybe it was aligned to begin with, but it's definitely no longer in alignment given who you're becoming. And so this culmination energy is a very now time type of energy that's deeply focused on who are you now? Where are you going now? What are you cultivating and creating now? Not who you used to be, but right now. And one of the things I love about Saturn's focus on structure, wholeness, integrity, and boundaries is that, and discipline and focus is that Saturn is really supplying us with the energy we need, that fortitude, that groundedness to not get over emotional about this. And instead to to really stand up tall and do what we need to do in this particular energy to move our external world into alignment with our spiritual growth. And here's the spiritual growth, Pisces, an external world, Virgo, where the sun sits is an earth sign, You're dealing with the external here. So I like to see this kind of energy. It's really helping us separate from things that may have dragged on for way too long and getting us really centered in the present moment so that we're prepared to move forward to a much brighter future. 
There's also communication here with this full moon. Uh, you'll see next to the full moon, this little sign with an N that is Nessus. Nessus represents where we can get a bit obsessive, and in this case about details pertaining to what we are completing, what we are concluding, making sure it is clean. It is a nice clean break. We've also got a sextile to Jupiter. It's a loose sextile, but it's a sextile nonetheless. And this provides, and I, I like this a lot because sometimes when Jupiter's in the mix in a trine position or a square position, Jupiter can be a bit heavy handed with his influence for expansion and optimism and like abundance and let's just flow and run headlong into the opportunity from the sextiling position. We've got a Jupiter providing, yes, opportunity, momentum, forward movement, optimism, but it's a, it's well balanced with a modicum of restraint. So that we're not, you just kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater or swinging from the chandeliers in this energy. It's a more grounded energy. It's just the right of optimistic wind in our sails and support to help us move forward. Instead of, you know, these other positions, like I said, the trine or the uh, square, even sometimes the opposition where J Jupiter can kind of blow things out of proportion or have us go overboard. This is far more balanced um, with both Saturn and Jupiter having this conversation. And this is happening inside of the context of the dates of a Mercury retrograde. And it's in the opposite sign of Virgo here. So here's Mercury representing consciousness and communication, our thought forms. And so there's a great opportunity here for refinement of needs, clarification of details and plans, agreements and strategies for moving forward in at least one key area of life as Virgo deals with all those details and plans and strategies and the refinement of things. Okay. There's a, you remember if you're, if you're new here, welcome. Love it that you're here. Hello. But if you've been with me, you'll recall in the previous two or two, I think at least lunations, I've been talking about there being this energy of one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas. So it's like this sense of like getting ready to go and this overwhelm of sensation of I got to do something with all this energy and simultaneously almost like a no place to put it. Like I'm ready to work whenever, you know, something's ready to move, but nothing's moving. This is when we're going to start to see movement. This is the moment where we get the foot off of the brake. So easing off the brake, it'll be slow, but it'll ease off so that we can start, you know, to slowly edge forward a bit. Okay. In at least one key area of life, there's a great opportunity here to take, like I said, the brakes off um, where in places where things have been at a stalemate. And here's the thing, even though Venus is retrograde, here's our Venus, and here's retrograde symbol there, Mercury is retrograde as well, even though they're both retrograde, you know, Venus representing money and love and Mercury consciousness and communication, the signs of each retrograde are overwhelmingly supportive for us to iron out some of our most challenging stuck points in key areas as these retrogrades are giving us a chance to revisit, redo, reflect, rewrite, reorganize, rethink, and make adjustments that are much better aligned for how we've grown and who we are becoming. As you know, our Venus is here in the sign of Leo. She's dealing with our self-sovereignty and our creative authority. And Virgo is here in our sign of service and health and well-being. Okay. This has me particularly excited for striking workers worldwide and especially striking artists. We know um, here in the United States, the actors and the writers unions have been striking. 
Um, and I'm hopeful around this time period that there can be some good back and forth negotiation and real dialogue because Pisces, the sign where this full moon is, governs the arts. And so, like I said, we've got this whole conversation about structural integrity and we have to bring things into the present with where they are at right now and release the past. And that's, you know, if you've been following any of that particular conversation or any of the conversations striking workers are having at the moment in any industry, you know that the conversation is, look, the, the circumstances have changed, higher ups, people in authority. And so thus our compensation also needs to change. We cannot have 2023 productivity on a 2018 or a 20, you know, 13 salary or budget. You're going to have to, we need to adjust with the adjustments of the global economies here. And so th it, this has me very hopeful that th there can actually be real dialogue and the stalemate can get released in all of the conversations around striking workers. So it's a key window of opportunity for contracts and agreements to be rewritten, renegotiated in a way that has the finer details being attended to since the sun is in Virgo, who is all about the details and sharing, shining a light on those details over the course of the Mercury retrograde. So this Mercury retrograde began uh, just a couple of days before this uh, recording on August 23rd, and it'll go for about three weeks until uh, the end of September. And then we have a, a three-week window of Mercury and shadows. This whole six-week period through September is a phenomenal period of time where we can iron out details around things that really need our attention in agreement with others in our world. Okay. So you may see some themes emerge of the like that my clients in the past week have seen emerge. I noticed there were some like repetitive consistent themes that people who booked with me had coming up in their world. I want to give you some examples now so that you know where to look in your own life for how this energy can be utilized to your benefit and advantage. Um, some examples include needing to negotiate contract terms with an ex, ex-spouse specifically on plans that impact you both regarding your kids or where you live or property and where you work things, even though you and your ex may not technically be together anymore, if you co-parent where you both live matters in order to facilitate co-parenting in a way that is supportive to your children, the school district matters. So negotiating all of that could be coming up. Renegotiating terms of a work contract or new role at your job and getting ironing out the details, bulleting out the list. What does this entail? What's the compensation package? What are the responsibilities? And along with that, I've had several conversations with clients about managing up and at, at their jobs to get key pieces, key pieces of critical feedback to either be able to do the job better or be better prepared for your next job if you've been released from your current job. Remember, if there is an ending at this point, it is indeed because Saturn is trying to help you get removed from your life anything that's truly undermining you. So if there's a job that's ending at this time and it's put you in a difficult position, understand that it has so much purpose and what's coming is going to be so much better. Uh, another example is redesigning and restructuring internships or educational opportunities, specifically because Virgo deals with mentors and apprenticeships. So I've spoken to folks who've needed to do this after there's been a fallout of the previous structure with a previous authority figure when it comes to these things. 
Um, another example was reading, needing to renegotiate volunteer or service terms and availability for causes you care about, restructuring how you participate and contribute so that it it's more balanced. You know, if you're the person who's always showing up volunteering, but nobody's doing half as much as you are, you may need to renegotiate those terms at this time. Another example could be a complete overhaul or stripping back to basics with your health and wellness routines, both mental and physical. We've got Virgo dealing with our physical health and Pisces being the sign that really governs some of our subconscious well-being. And lastly, another example I've seen is refining our understanding of our spiritual connections in relationships, redefining your energetic boundaries with people to align with your own wholeness and what would be healing for you to allow you to really walk in integrity with your power where you have felt either energetically drained or emotionally spent with people. Pisces deals with energy and emotions together. You may find at this time you need to draw some bright lines with some people in your world. What all of these scenarios have in common are needing to structure or restructure, there's Saturn, some key rules of engagement with an institution, authority figure, or other fixed structure in your life. And for some, this is renegotiating that stuff with your own body and your own health or your marriage as it is you are marriage is a legally binding structure in your life and your own body and your own health you are bound to one of the things people don't often talk about with virgo is that in ancient history when people really used astrology in their day-to-day -day life a, a virgo really dealt with bondage and it dealt with uh the condition of enslaved people either in your household or if you were an enslaved person the people who um you uh, were the property of virgo really deals with those imbalanced power dynamics okay and so with th this is this is thematically why we may have a level of somewhere during this full moon in Pisces, a place where your life is asking you to take the bull by the horns, even if it's gently, and lead the authorities in your life in the direction of what it is you know you need to do and create in order to do the work that they've asked you to do. So this full moon in Pisces is ending a season and a period of time where there may have been some level of disempowerment. Saturn's bringing about a restructuring in the now time and giving you the opportunity with this Mercury retrograde to have the necessary conversations to get things back into alignment for you. Okay. This full moon in Pisces is thematically a full moon of returning to a more complete whole state as Pisces, like I said, is that concluding sign of the Zodiac. It represents the all things, the cosmic soup that is no one thing in particular, the opposing sign Virgo parses things and gives them an individual definition, structure, and meaning. So the full moon in Pisces gives us a reckoning with themes to do with returning to oneness and wholeness and it's amplified with Saturn's role at this time this combination is showing us where we need to take steps to get grounded in our new chapter steps to draw lines between the old and the new so that we don't repeat the past and steps to initiate a more defined present and future. Now there's another reason that this full moon is so heavily focused on authority figures, power struggles, and heavy on the decisions must be made feature. And we'll so we'll talk about that and the major themes of the Mercury retrograde and how this Venus retrograde is about to wrap up in the in a in the next 10 days. 
momentarily. But for now, if you've already heard something that resonates for you, will you please hit the like button for me? It really helps the content circulate to people who may deeply need these messages to know life is indeed working out for them at this time, even if it's not seeming like it. And it would be easy to fall into the trap of looking at looking at the Saturnian influence through the male gaze and going, oh no, everything is wrong. Everything is ending. They're shutting things down. There is separation, catastrophe, and go in that you know catastrophizing direction. But I am telling you, that is not what's actually happening here. And so when you hit the like button for anyone who's wandered too far in that direction, may help them get the memo. Hey, hey, come on back here where your power is. This is an opportunity for you if you actually take it as one. Okay. And if you need any support clarifying which decisions to make in your life or the right timing for changes, especially on the work and home front, as these are heavily indicated as areas for change at this time, you can book a reading with me at kmunastro.com. Link is in the description box below. Now, the reason this full moon has a lot to do with authority figures, bosses, jobs, and structures is because of the larger season that this is happening within, okay? Where is this? I have a little thing here. Oh, yeah. Okay, that goes there. Okay. This larger season has to do with this. Sorry, I keep notes and some I ha add, had to add in a sticky to make sure that I had a special note for a special place, but that's for later. Things may be coming to a head now in your work settings as Virgo, where the sun and Mercury are, and that's over here, Mercury, sun, here in the sign of Virgo. These two are dealing, are they deal with places where we serve. They deal with imbalanced power dynamics, like I said, with people who supervise or oversee us and people we oversee. And the Mercury retrograde is having a falling into direct conversation here with Pluto, which in many cases also deals with authorities and institutions. Okay. Pluto also deals with endings and completions. Pluto deals with the resurrection cycle. So an ending and integration, and then a rebirth. Pluto also deals with power, control, and fear in the shadow. And Pluto specifically in the shadow will deal with manipulation. Okay. Now, since Pluto is retrograde as well, this gives us a need to revisit themes that Pluto governs and give them a reworking at this time because Pluto deals so heavily in power. It's the sign that deals with structure and authority, and it can feel a little bit like things might be going backwards as Pluto has returned to Capricorn, where it's been since 2008. And then we'll move forward again into Aquarius. And so if it feels like things are going backward, please know that that's temporary. Here's the thing. Where Pluto goes, power flows and follows. And Pluto will enrich and empower any sign that it happens to be in. So during the years that Pluto was in Capricorn, from 2008 up until this year, 2023, we saw an expansion of the power, control, and authority of the institutions and governments in our lives. We saw the rise of many autocracies worldwide that sprung up in supposedly democratic territories and places. We also saw the enrichment of banks and institutions and governments and systems that held more rights than the individuals did. Now that Pluto is exiting Capricorn, what we are going to see is that power shifting into a completely new sign. 
Pluto's going to move into Aquarius and we got a taste of that this year. I'm going to give you the date so you can recall what was happening in your life. So, cause what's happened then will happen. Even more of that will come alive for you when Pluto goes back into Aquarius, but Aquarius is a very different sign. And this is Aquarius deals with the people. It deals with revolution. It deals with collectives. Aquarius deals with quantum leaps forward in consciousness and technology. So you'll notice just as Pluto has begun to arrive in Aquarius, the conversation about artificial intelligence and its power and its uses has become a very dominant conversation in the public zeitgeist at this time. How do we, Pluto, control artificial intelligence, this new technology, Aquarius, in a way that isn't detrimental to us? How do we utilize it in a way that actually helps us? Um, and how do we allow it to not undermine everything we've worked for up until this point? Pluto has also brought power and enrichment to collectives and groups of people. These are unions, essentially. And so I'm going to give you the dates so that you can track what's been going on in your life with this, because this there's a very, even though this is, has wide application and at the macro level, for each of you, there's going to be a very personal experience of this. So Pluto moved into Aquarius March 23rd and stayed there through June 11th. So that period, April, May, that it was like basically a two and a half month window, tail end of March, beginning of June, something different was going on, letting you know, okay, wow, this is, this is new. There's a different era. There's a different energy here. The Pluto retrograde began on May 1st, and that was right around the time that we saw uh, the Writers Guild go on strike when Pluto started to move backward. And that was a moment of saying, hey, power's imbalanced here. We need to correct this. Pluto re-entered Capricorn, the sign of institutions, on June 11th and will remain there through October. To, through January, but Pluto's going to turn direct on October 10th. And that's when we'll start to see this momentum back toward everything you experienced in from March 23rd to June 11th, that newness, that freshness, that possibility energy. We're going to start to get that again come January of next year as Pluto re-enters Aquarius. Okay. So Understand that because this Plutonian authority and power structure thing is written all over, you know, what's happening in the world of employment, chances are there's some level of employment change going on for you. I've seen a lot of it in my sessions as Pluto dances at the tail end of the sign Capricorn that deals with jobs like I said, institutions, um, kind of corporate entities, all of that is Capricorn. But as Pluto, or I said, Pluto, where Pluto goes, power flows and follows. As Pluto leaves that place and climbs into the sign of people and collectives and newness, we're going to start to see more people, you know, leave corporate entities and move into um, probably more individual work, more entrepreneurship to some degree, working for themselves, or more workers banding together to own the companies that they work for so that they can set their own prices, their own raises, their own rates, etc. that kind of thing. In your individual lives, as Pluto is wrapping up in Capricorn, I've seen a lot of people shifting jobs, trying to figure out what they're going to do next, what their next step is. And I've also, because Pluto's an outer planet, deeply impacts the opposing sign, which is cancer. Cancer deals with family and homes and where we live. There's also a significant amount of shifting and questioning during this period 
Am I moving? Am I not moving? Am I staying where I was? Am I going someplace else? Where's the right place for me to locate myself? How do I know? What's the timeline? All of that. Okay. So thematically, if these are the things that are coming up for you, please understand that you are right on schedule, right on time. You're not losing it. Your world is not falling apart. It's actually coming together. And furthermore, there's also some real support here for to come together in a way of your choosing if in fact you're willing to really own your power, that's Pluto, to call your shot, to name what you want and what you need. The especially the closer we get to Pluto and Aquarius, the power rests with you, not the corporation. It was, who was I watching the other day, scrolling past something and some, I think <laughs> the airline workers who have a union decided to strike, but they, this particular day wanted to pull up with the actors like <laughs> nobody's working okay nobody so they pulled up with the actors and I don't know wh who it was who was speaking on this particular day but she was like the days of them telling us that we just need to be grateful to have a job are over they should be grateful that they have us and I was like oh Pluto and Aquarius these people are having none of it none of it and so it's it's entertaining from an astrological perspective because I clearly don't own a corporate entity but when Uranus was discovered the ruling planet that governs Aquarius it was at the exact same time the French Revolution occurred and the poor people started looking across the river at Marie Antoinette's little palace and going hold up hold up hold up hold up you want us to eat what cake while you eat the riches and fruits of all of the land that we spent all year harvesting for you this see this is how marie lost her head so understand that the power really is in your hands at this moment in time and the further we get into pluto and aquarius energy the more you're gonna feel that that you have power to be able to affect your future um, and you have to make stands and choices at this time to be able to facilitate those outcomes. So I don't know, like I said, I find it a little astrologically entertaining because um, personally I was like, you know, it's the term corporate greed <laughs> is, is, is rife with, you know, um, meaning at the moment, it's alive with meaning at the moment as workers are saying enough. And you too may find yourself saying, okay, this is where the line is drawn. I can't live like this in at least one area of life. And that area of life is going to be the area of life where Capricorn meets Aquarius in your chart. Okay. So you want to be paying attention to that because that's the place where things are due and scheduled for a pretty dramatic change. Okay. Uh, if you need help figuring that out, you can always book a reading with me over at kmoonastro.com. The second place where you're going to see pretty dynamic change is because Pluto specifically governs the sign of Scorpio, the house that Scorpio governs in your chart is also up for dramatic change. It's going to be that death, afterlife integration, and then rebirth. So it helps to know your chart. And if you know, you're like, okay, wait, where, what is she talking about? Just you can book a 30 minute with me and I can walk you through these changes in a relatively short order so that you understand what you're looking for, what to let go of so that your fingers don't get dragged off while the ending is happening because you're clutching on for dear life. Don't want to do that. Looking at you fixed signs. Definitely want to let go in this energy. Okay. Now, good stuff here. What else do I want to say about this? These notes have going on. 
Yep. Okay. So our external world is getting aligned with our internal state changes and shifts in mindset that occurred through 2020, 2021, and 2022. So now our external world is playing catch up. And this is really working to help us get to our most free, most aligned, and most powerful. This lunation is very external circumstance focused. So, you know, there's been a lot of lunations up until this point this year. Where I've spoken to you a lot about mindset, you know, the way you're thinking, the way you're speaking, the way you're orienting yourself. This particular lunation brings that full through from, you know, the mind, the voice box out through the limbs of the body into the external world. We had multiple lunations before this that were transformative on the inside as it is within. So it is on the outside. And this is a moment where the outside is going to play some catch up, or at least we're invited to make it play some catch up with some key decisions that will help it to do so. The one thing I would advise you not to do in this energy, do not sit back and wait. Do not wait and see what other people are going to do. Do not in this energy, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's this after school program picture that comes to mind, right? Where the teacher brings out a box of snacks and there's enough snacks for every single child. In fact, for every single child to have two snacks, right? But there's this one child who consistently just waits until all the other kids have ran up to the box and taken what they wanted and just takes what's left. Don't be that child. This is not for you. You can do better than that. When the box of snacks are presented, and they are being presented right now, my friends, you walk up to that box and you get the snack that you want, okay? Okay. That's my encouragement for you. Get the snack that you want to eat. Got it? Now, we have some supporting influences in this energy, okay? And they include this Mercury retrograde in conversation with Jupiter and Uranus here, okay? And um, I like this because that's a trining energy, and it really opens up some luck, some surprises that are co-created with the universe, co-created God within speaking to God outside of you and the two of you working together, formulating you literally being in the right place and the right time to say yes to the opportunities uh, that could be location and time dependent. And so any opportunity to be in a location that's aligned with something that you really want, I invite you to make the time in this space to absolutely say yes. Don't be so caught up in trying to be there for other people and get them through their hard time or when, when they're not even self-advocating, their woe is me that you miss when the teacher drops the snacks and you can't go get the one that you want, Okay. The self-interest in this time is necessary. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just because life is chessboarding us all. It's really important for you to keep your eyes on your own test. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep your eyes on the direction you are going in. Try not to get sucked up into other people's stuff. It, it's it's possible in this energy, and it's just this is just a warning. Don't do that. Then then people survived before you; they'll survive after you. Utilize this time to make the strides that the planets are supporting you to make in your own life. Okay. Um, this Jupiter Uranus thing speaking to Mercury is going to provide you with a ton of insight and revelation and clarity. And it's making these with you know, this Venus retrograde going down, Pluto's retrograde, Neptune's retrograde, Saturn's retrograde, right? We've got a lot going on here. 
This is making this a season of second chances. It's a second chance rich season. So be sure to show up for it. Okay. And one of the things in particular um, that in this energy, be careful how I say this. If the urge is hitting you to revive a dream or a vision that didn't work out in the past, right? Like there's something that you had in your heart. Yeah, I really want to start this business, but it didn't work out. So I put it aside and I don't think it's still going to work. If it's still on your heart, if it's still on your mind and it's really strongly presenting itself to you at this moment, Please, please, please understand that it's really because God within you is telling you it was the right idea, wrong time before, but now, now, now is the right time, not then. Virgo deals really heavily in sequencing, pacing, and patterns of time. So, With so much fortuitous energy between Jupiter, optimism, luck, opportunity, and expansion, Uranus, creative opportunities, and lightning chances, the two of them being so close together in Taurus, this facilitates third dimensional luck in an earth sign, speaking harmoniously with Mercury, that's consciousness here in the sun, that's you, it was supposed, it's your idea, God gave it to you for a reason, in industrious Virgo who knows how to make things happen, this is really the perfect time for any dream that needs to be revived to be revived and thrive, okay? And it's also if there's like, you know, some unspoken words, some unspoken communication with some people, things that need to get said, this is a great time to do it, okay? There is a grand trine here with Pluto in the mix with, okay, that's just, that's too much drawing going on, Miss K. Moon. Let's clean that up. Pluto, power and authority, Uranus, hand of the divine, divine insight, revelation, quantum leaps forward, Mercury retrograde, consciousness. They are all talking to each other in a conversation. It's loose, but it's there that astrologers call a grand trine. And in an earth sign, this is an opportunity because Pluto and Uranus are so heavily changed focused. This is going to cause a heaven and earth alignment to co-conspire with you. Trust me when I tell you there is luck and support from the divine realms in the invisible realms if you just move in the physical realms on the desires of your heart right now do not wait do not pass go do not collect a hundred dollars do not look back if you if you left it behind if you forgot it at home leave it there just keep moving forward on whatever dream is in your heart now is the time to execute 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 And we have Neptune opposite Mercury in this energy. And normally, this is another supporter, but normally you would hear me kind of roll my verbal eyes (laughs) talking about Neptune, who can create some confusion, and Mercury, whose stock and trade is clarity. Um, Normally, I'm concerned about that kind of energy, but because Mercury is retrograde, which can make Mercury just the right amount of hesitant and empowered by Uranus, which gives that Mercury a lot of divine insight and empowered by Pluto, which also facilitates incisive methodical thinking here, they are acting as stabilizers preventing Neptune from giving its worst from its home sign and instead allowing it to give more of its best. And that's inspiration and spiritual connection to all that is. This is an opportunity for intuition to really guide your steps in the implementation of what it is you want to create. Okay. There's going to be a lot of clarity through refinement, communication, since 
Mercury is retrograde in Virgo. And clarification and digging into detail, fine print and specifics since, since Mercury is retrograde and that it won't just happen in our mind, but our intuition is going to pick up on details as well. And just eat, pay attention to the little nudges that say, you know, maybe you should check this. Just make sure that this and this is in place as you keep moving forward. Okay. So this is really good. I like to see this a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's no chance for us to be fooled in this energy. We're going to be able to see hidden things very, very clearly with Pluto and Mercury in conversation and in communication. And for those who are energetically sensitive in the physical body, that never used to be something that I had. I was always kind of spiritually or emotionally sensitive, but of late, my physical body has been like, yeah, you may want to, you may, you, we're going to turn on some sensitivity over here too. Um, you may want to maybe spend a little less time with crowds or large groups of people. Alternatively, do the work you know you need to do to keep your energy grounded, sealed, and protected. Um, because there's a large energy influx here and your perceptivity to what people have going on in their energetic fields can be very heightened in this energy. Got a lot of planets sitting in earth right now. The great perceiver, the one who perceives information and energy, Mercury here being very highly influenced by Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus, which can bring a lot of information from the unseen worlds and transfer it into your consciousness via your cells, since they're all in, since Pluto and Uranus and Mercury are all in Earth signs. Okay. So just, you just want to be careful about what you pick up. The sensitivity may have been amplified for you ever since the opening of August. Okay. Um, and so it, just be careful with yourself as you're out and about with people and taking care of your energy and not intentionally placing yourself around people and circumstances, especially in groups where there's heavy toxic load. You want to steer clear of that. Okay. Vibrational toxic load. Steer clear of it. Lastly, oh my gosh, there's so much to say. Okay, Moon, you're so prolific today. Oh gosh, this feels like it's so long. <laughs> but lastly, about Virgo Pisces and the combo of Jupiter. Jupiter here, Neptune here. Sorry, Neptune here and Mercury here. All three of these are in conversation together. Okay. When you see this combo in a conversation or in communication, Neptune communicating with Jupiter and the two of them communicating with Mercury, when you see this in a natal chart, but certainly in the atmosphere by transit, this can be a period of time uh, that can indicate addictions coming to the forefront or flaring up. I've spoken to several people in the last two weeks who are in recovery with either food or substances or a behavioral addiction. And I just want to say hats off to you. This energy is very supportive for helping reveal the root of the addiction and find new solutions to get the needs met that the addiction was meeting, even though, you know, using an addiction to meet needs is never really recommended. <laughs> it's better to get it met in other ways. This is a beautiful energy for returning to self-love, returning to wholeness. Um, and if an addiction is triggered in the now time, it's because there is also a solution available to you in the now time. It's, it's existing now and you're ready now to take the new step. Okay. So if you need some any support around navigating some of these themes, you know where to find me. I'm at Kmoon Astro. Um, let's talk about love. I want to get into the love themes because there's definitely some stuff going on around love when it comes to this full moon in Pisces. 
we've got Jupiter here, 15th degree of Taurus, in a square formation with two planets that separately have meanings that include love but aren't exclusive to love and where they overlap is love so it is definitely about love okay and that's juno here and venus okay this is a very fortunate energy it's an alignment of the right people coming into your life at the right time the square in a fire sign, these ladies are in a fire sign here, Juno here, it, or Jupiter there is in earth sign Taurus, but the square from them and the fire sign can also indicate passionate, steamy, physical meetups as well. The markers for longevity in the thing are very limited at this time. Um, they can be developed but the longevity markers aren't necessarily here. Juno on her own can certainly bring longevity because um, she specifically deals with marriage and commitment. But normally when we're seeing longevity in the mix in a love situation, somewhere, somehow Saturn is in communication with it. Saturn is not present <laughs> at this conversation. It is like, you know, all lust and passion and like, let's just see how it feels and take it one step at a time. It's all that kind of yummy energy. And this is an energy that's more supportive of something that maybe had legs in the past romantically, you know, someone you might have history with getting a second chance if the requisite com conversations are had while this Mercury retrograde is going on. It's very supportive to two people who were right for each other, but not yet mature enough to handle the quality of love they experienced with each other. So coming together presented a lot of obstacles like wounds coming up and um, needing to be addressed, needing to get healed. The chemistry is definitely here in this configuration. It speaks to someone from the past, perchance showing up that you may have had a lot of chemistry with, you know, knock, knock, knocking on the door. The chemistry is not the issue, though. It's the spiritual, emotional, and mental maturity to handle it. The more physically attractive we have found, our, we find ourselves as a species to, you know, other members of the species, I have found the more reason and logic seems to go out the window. <laughs> um, and the more we tend to act on things like impulse. And so you may have seen that that would have been a problem in the past. Okay. In this energy, you'll see all the old chemistry is right where you left it if someone resurfaces for you at this time. I've read for several people who have, you know, Venus and Leo in their seventh house of committed partnership in the last few weeks. Um, and for you guys, very specifically, this does speak to a lover or an ex from the past potentially coming back. And in this energy, if they had it in them to even reach out at all, because this energy is like so self-focused, if they reach out at all, it's really because they're new. They're different. The girls here, Juno and Venus, are going to speak to Uranus here before they wrap up. Um, and this boy here, Uranus influencing the two of them is going to really reveal to you precisely how new, different and evolved the other person has been. And that'll be some time in the next 30 to 40 days. So just be on the lookout for that. If someone does show up, I want to say you can trust it at this time because they have done some evolutionary work. The real question in this, and the reason I bring this up is literally everyone I've spoken to with the Leo 7th house has been like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want anybody from my past. 
The coffin has been nailed shut. It is six feet deep. Pass is a pass for a reason. I don't deal with no exes. K-Moon, you can move on from this. And I am telling you, (laughs) people can change. People change. The real question is if you changed. So if someone has the courage, Leo, courage to show up, maybe don't be so hard on them especially if you've been looking for love and they're the only ones that happen to be showing up, maybe a little bit of divine alignment in that could be a sign. Maybe you already met the person you're supposed to be with. You know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, planting some seeds here. Don't come for me in the comments. Okay. People do not come for me in the comments. (laughs) Moving on. I'm moving on. Okay. I'm going to talk about something else now. Where it comes to money, this is a wonderful energy for creating money from old ideas, old projects, or old jobs. Like I said earlier, this could be the right time for those old ideas to bring breathe life into them again. Wouldn't have been the time before, but if it's calling to you now, it's because it is indeed go time now, even if it didn't work out before. And you'll see as Venus goes direct that the money to support it will in fact be there validating that you are right on time right now. Okay. We have Chiron conjunct the North Node. The season of Chiron conjunct the North Node has arrived. And I want to speak to this because it may seem kind of minor. I don't know I don't watch any other astrologers, so I don't know if any of them have spoken to it, but it's a big deal. And I really want to help you understand it before the energy of it becomes louder. Okay. It's going to make us all a bit more sensitive about ourselves, who we are, and how we are perceived by other people when we are being our absolute selves. They're both sitting in the sign of Aries, the sign of the self, sign of the individual. And the others that we, and I'm using air quotes, you can't see my fingers, but that's what I'm doing. The others that will be most sensitive to as Chiron and the North Node come into strong communication are going to be indicated by the house that Aries governs in your chart. Now, again, you need some help figuring that out. You can always book with me a quick 30 minute. We can go through most of the themes we just talked about and my calendar is wide open next week at the moment. So definitely feel free to book. Um, I did map that out. This energy is going to be with us through the end of Aries season next year. So that will be mid April, May, Uh, the beginning of May, this Chiron conjunct the North node thing that has us being more sensitive. If you're already feeling self-conscious, it's this stays and it amplifies, it gets heightened. Okay. The purpose of this season is to help us all step into our unique individuality and embrace the wisdom of being unique, being different, being one of a kind. And for some first of a kind, The themes are with us roughly through the end of, like I said, Aries season and will ask us to confront and deal with shame about being unique or different. Our personal ambitions, especially where they break the mold of things that currently exist and placing those ambitions, those things here on earth, meant much of the things may be things that people have never seen before. We're thematically going to be dealing with rejection, ostracization themes, and a general sense of belongingness. We'll be dealing with correcting distortions and masculinity, both distorted perceptions on old templating about what masculinity was and rewrites pertaining to new definitions of what masculinity needs to become here on earth in the new era. Okay. So we're going to start to see some emerging conversations from people who are having this dialogue. What does it mean to be, what does it mean to be masculine? What does it mean to be a boy? What does it mean to be a man? What is it, you know, just the gender, the energy, the principles of it, 
what it is, what it isn't, all of that. This will also include a significant excavation of masculine woundedness. Chiron deals with wounds and bringing those to the surface for healing. And I am, ooh, I'm here for it. I'm really excited about this. It's a major redef redefinition period for masculinity here on earth. And some of these themes have already begun to surface in the public spheres. So look for them in the private spheres as well. All right, guys, guess what I got. I love you guys. If you resonate with it, like it. If you need support, book it. I'm over at kmoonastro.com and join me for the live conversation about ascension symptoms and light work and navigating your next step. I'll be live at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Greenwich mean. Please check a time zone converter for your local time. Um, and that'll be on Sunday, August 27th, sorry, not 12 p.m., 2 p.m. Eastern, okay? Um, oh, man, I really just wrote it wrong in two different places. Good grief, K-Moon. What did you put on your calendar, sister? Um, K Moon put on her calendar that she is supposed to go live. Oh, yeah, she's going live at 12. So there's a typo here. I am live at 12. Okay, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean. What I said was correct. I will update this. So when you see it on YouTube, it will be the right one. Let's do first look now. I'm going to show you the new moon in Virgo which is two weeks away and give you my first impression of where the energy, how the energy progresses from the full moon in Pisces to the new moon in Virgo. Here is that new moon in Virgo. It is taking place on September 14th at 9.39 p.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for a local time. Ooh, Look at all this earth energy. I love it. And all of this mutable energy. I love it more. This is literally the outer circumstances realigning themselves to fit the manifestations that we want. And we've been cultivating inside mutable energy changes things. Earth is about material realms. It's going to shift on the outside. So I love to see this now. Where does the full moon? Okay. Uh, new moon. Right here at the 21st degree of Pi uh, Virgo. Mm, interesting. It'll be directly opposite Neptune. Also interesting. Mercury will not be finished being retrograde, <laughs> but we'll be almost there. Um, Mercury will not be in conversation with the lunation. Venus will be done being retrograde. In conversation will be Jupiter and Uranus, though. Here, ooh, I like this. Ooh, it's like victory energy. I really like to see this. Yes. Oh, and Pluto's part of the conversation, too. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is really good, guys. This is really good. Okay. So do you remember the part of the full moon and ver uh full moon in pisces where i was like listen y'all do not be that kid who doesn't go get their snacks after school <laughs> who lets everybody else pick over stuff and they just take what's left and shrug their shoulders but then complain about how they never get anything they want in life don't do it this energy is some of the most empowering energy I have seen for literally shape-shifting, bending, uh, transforming like you're playing with Legos, your third dimensional reality. Anything you want to shift in your material world, if it's something around your financial circumstance, something around where you live, something about your job and a role you might be in. There is so much capacity through the full moon in Pisces and the new moon in Virgo for you to literally just like paint like a canvas, just like take actions and then all just kind of work out in your favor. 
please go get what you want, y'all. Please. The world is going to be a better place when you are acting on the dreams that God has placed in your heart. Okay? I promise you it'll work out for you this time. I promise you it's much better than it's ever been. All right? So all I can say is it's go time, people. It is go time. I really like to see it. That's a wrap. I will see you on Sunday for our Ascension Symptoms Conversation, our Ascension Energy Update, and a little bit of live Q&A. And if you um, enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and you know where to find me for all other things. I love you guys. Take great care. Bye for now.